Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Space Week Live, episode 147 on this Sunday, February 19th, 2023. Uh, as always, welcome and thank you for coming. Uh, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat. Just make sure to tag my name, at Raw Space, so that we're sure to see them. Uh, we'll collate them and I will address them at the end. So, uh, getting into it, uh, in the last week we had a handful of launches. Um, if I can figure out my interface here. Okay. Starting off, last Thursday, JAXA made their first attempt to launch the new H3 rocket built by Mitsubishi Heavy Industries. Uh, not, it's, it's a separate corporation from the car manufacturer, but they're, they're all related. Um, ancestrally, I guess. It's the successor to the H-2A and the H-2B, which launched the HTV cargo missions to the International Space Station up until a couple of years ago. All the lights were green, and it was time for launch. Let's see what happened. フライトモードオン。フライトモードオン。9、8、7、加工品統治点火。ハイドロジェンプロスミナイトオン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オン。オ
Um, that is to say, you can't uh, extinguish solid fuel, solid rocket fuel once it's been lit, uh, whereas you can uh, both throttle and uh, extinguish, and depending on the capabilities of the of the system, relight uh, liquid fuel. So that's why they were able to fire up the main engine engines and then shut them down when they before releasing the clamps that hold the vehicle down. Uh, you know when they when the system determined that there was a problem with the SRVs. Um, so uh, Friday morning, SpaceX launched another batch of Starlinks from Vandenberg in California. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engines full power and lift off of Starlink Group Two Five. Go Pal, go Starlink. Vehicles pitching down range. And what the chamber pressure is nominal. Looking good. Little blurry. Now they had a um, a, a nice clear day there at Vandenberg, which is actually kind of uh, I don't know if you'd call it the exception, but it's definitely they have a lot of foggy days there, or at least cloudy days. But uh, it was nice and clear this particular day. Now, if we fast forward to the landing, they did not bring the booster back to land at the pad. Uh, instead, it landed on the drone ship. So here you go. And there you heard that the first stage is now transonic, which means it is traveling near the speed of sound. Terminal guidance. Stage one landing burn. And there's confirmation that the stage one landing burn has started in preparation for touchdown on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. Stage one landing like deploy. X marks the spot and successful landing. That night, about 12 hours later, SpaceX launched again, this time from Cape Canaveral with the Inmarsat I-6 F2 geostationary communications satellite. Fifteen seconds. Minus ten. Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Engines full power and lift off of Falcon 9 and Inmarsat. Go Falcon, go Inmarsat. Vehicles pitching down range. Stage one propulsion is nominal. Power wrench telemetry nominal. And here's the landing. And back shut down. And there you can see it in here on the nets. We have confirmation of Seco stage one. one landing burn. And the landing burn for stage one has begun. We are now just waiting for confirmation of good orbital insertion for our second stage. Nominal orbit 
insertion. There you've heard on the nets, nominal orbital Spike insertion. The bus signal, Cape Canaveral. We are now waiting for Falcon to Stage land. Stage one back. landing leg deploy. Back on our drone ship, just read the instructions. And as you can see and hear it, you have SpaceX's 173rd recovery of an orbital class rocket, including first stage landings for Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy. Now so there you go. Uh, now, uh, MD5632 just said SpaceX must be producing these rockets as fast as milk cartons. Well, I would point out that... Um, Let's see if we can get a good view of the rocket. Okay, so you can you can kind of see the uh, the the first stage boosters kind of uh, sooty. And um, uh, in the previous video, the uh, the booster was very sooty. So basically, you uh, the the degree of soot on the first stage booster indicates how many uh, is a rough indication of how many previous launches it's conducted. And so because SpaceX reuses the first stage boosters as well as the payload fairings, um, uh, they don't have to produce, I mean, they do a lot of launches, but they don't have to produce like, you know, churn out multiple boosters per week or whatever. Uh, they do have to produce the upper stages though for, you know, for each launch. And so, and so, yeah, they, they do have pro probably most of their production time, I would guess, is spent making upper stages because that's a not insignificant portion of the rocket, the upper stages and the interstage, the black interstage. Um, uh, but the boat, but the first stages are uh, mostly reused. You know, it's actually um, only occasionally do we see a brand new first stage booster. Uh, now they do get refurbished, and I don't know how much work actually is involved in that, but. Uh, you know, they've had, uh, I think their shortest turnaround for a booster was something like three weeks, something like that. So uh, not too, too much. But uh, in any case, uh, moving right along. Yesterday, the Progress MS-21 cargo craft departed the ISS laden with trash, bound for a fiery re-entry over the Pacific. This is a time lapse, courtesy of... Sign news. Whee. And there it goes. All right. So fairly short and sweet uh, summary of the past week's uh, launches. Not too, too much happened. Um, now, looking ahead to this week, on Monday, February 20th, we have a new moon. So uh, if you go to the raw space calendar, which I'm linking in the chat, um, uh, you'll be able to see all these events, as well as I've uh, put all of the lunar events, the new moons, the full moons, including the, the solar and lunar, the solar and lunar eclipses for this year, for 2023, uh, so you can see when those will be. In any case, uh, new moon is coming up on the 20th, so if you uh, want to do any stargazing, uh, that would be a decent night to do it if you have clear skies, because the moon won't be right in the sky. Uh, now, as far as launches, they are <laughs> uh, pretty much clustered around Thursday. So Thursday, February 23rd, uh, at 6.55 a.m. Eastern, 11.55 UTC, a Chinese Long March 3 is going to launch ChinaSat-26. Uh, live coverage is not expected for this launch, but it is on the schedule nonetheless. Later that day, Thursday, at 1.37 p.m. Eastern, 16, I'm sorry, 18.37 UTC, is a SpaceX launch of Starlink Mission 6-1. Now this is the first mission uh, that will be launching the new larger uh, Starlink um, satellite design called Starlink Version 2 Mini. So you may have heard of the Starlink Version 2, which is the, the very large, because Starlinks are, are fairly small. Um, 
but uh, the Starlink V2 Mini is uh, somewhat larger, and the V2 uh, regular, I guess, is really large. In fact, uh, it is rumored that there is no currently operating launch vehicle that is big enough to accommodate the Starlink version 2, and that's what uh, was anticipated will be one of the early payloads of uh, Starship once once it's in production. Um, but the V2 Mini is kind of uh, the stepping stone to V2 proper. Uh, later that same day, Thursday at 7.34 p.m. Eastern on the 23rd, or uh, 034 UTC on the 24th is a Russian Soyuz launch of the Soyuz MS-23 crew vehicle with no crew. As you may recall, last December, um, there was a major leak of uh, ammonia coolant from the Soyuz vehicle that was docked to the Russian segment of the International Space Station, and it hap it, the leak started just an hour or two prior to a planned Russian spacewalk, uh, which they canceled, understandably. And um, so that vehicle is going to be disposed of and um, uh, because it has no coolant. And uh, so they're sending up a replacement with no crew so that the current crew of uh, MS-22 can come back down because they don't have a viable vehicle up there. So, uh, perhaps for the first time ever, um, we have crew on the space station that do not have a viable means to get home. Like, normally, it's a hard and fast rule that there has to be, just like, you know, there needs to be enough lifeboats on a ship, there have to be enough return craft on the ISS to accommodate all of the crew which are on the ISS. But currently, we don't have that because there are the three crew of MS-22, which have been continuing to do their daily work, but without uh, a, a viable vehicle to get them back home. And they haven't been up there too long. They're, like, they're actually going to be cutting their six-month stay a little bit short by about a month uh, when they return on MS-23. But it will be launching uh, again this, this Thursday. Uh, and I will be providing coverage of that. Um, so some of the, you may have noticed some of the launches I've been skipping uh, restream coverage of on my channel. And that's be, that's basically for my own sanity's sake. Uh, I'm trying to limit the number of uh, streams that I make myself do to, uh, you know, a more reasonable number. And uh, so I'm, I'm sticking basically to the important ones, you know, and Starlinks, I mean, SpaceX has great coverage of that. You can watch it on SpaceX. And of course, you're always free to chat with your, your raw space peeps uh, in my 24-7 music stream live chat as you watch the launch, like in another tab or whatever. But um, the Soyuz launch, I will be covering. And... Yet later, that same night, um, at 11.10 p.m. Thursday evening Eastern Time, or, uh, let's see, uh, 04.10 UTC on the 24th, is a Chinese Long March 2 launch of an unknown payload. And again, with most of the Chinese launches, there is no live coverage expected of that. And finally... With coverage beginning on Saturday, uh, Saturday, February 25th at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, or 03.30 UTC on the 26th, is the launch of SpaceX Dragon Crew-6. So, or rather, SpaceX Crew-6, uh, I should, let me rephrase that whole thing. Crew-6 on a SpaceX Crew Dragon vehicle <laughs> uh, atop a Falcon 9 rocket. So this will be the sixth official um, expedition crew launched on the Crew Dragon. And uh, uh, prior to that, there was, of course, one other crewed launch of the Crew Dragon, which was Demo 2. But uh, in any case, so coverage will begin at 10.30 p.m. Eastern. But 
the launch time is about three and a half hours later at, because they begin the crew coverage when the crew is suiting up uh, prior to launch, and then they show them driving out to the pad and so on. But the launch itself is at 2.07 a.m. Eastern Time on the 26th. That's next Sunday. And that's uh, 0707 UTC. So as always, it'll be launching from Kennedy Space Center because that's the launch pad that's uh, configured for crew. And uh, they will arrive at, <clears throat> at the space station. Oh, <clears throat> excuse me, losing my voice. They will arrive at the space station on the 27th around 1 a.m. Eastern. Uh, that's 6 a.m. UTC. Now that is next Monday, so I'll cover, I'll, I'll speak more about that uh, next week. But until then, I, I will be covering, even though it's at 2 a.m., fortunately it is on a Sunday, so um, uh, if I lose a little sleep, it's not that big a deal. I will be providing coverage of the Crew-6 launch. I might not provide coverage of the docking because that's, again, that's at 1 a.m. on a work night, but uh, we'll see. I'll make that decision at a later time. Um, so that's it for the coming week. Let me get to your questions. Hopefully you tagged my name. Da -da -da. All right. Um, okay, so MVM Motive Log Music asked, Raw Space, what will happen to the leaky Soyuz? That's the MS-22 vehicle that leaked all of its coolant back in December. Uh, it will be disposed of, uh, deorbited over the Pacific, over Point Nemo, um, which is a very remote, the most remote part of the Pacific, where it's basically we try to Anytime there's a satellite deorbiting, uh, we try to aim for Point Nemo because that minimizes the chance of uh, interfering with any people on land or shipping lanes because there's almost nothing out there. There's not even much wildlife out there because it's so remote. But um, uh, so that answers that question. Anything else? Kind of light on the questions this week. That's all right. Um, uh, David Gobin mentioned that, and this is regarding the solid rocket boosters of the H3, Japanese H3 rocket not igniting. He said, some of my Estes rockets, or Estes rockets, I'm not sure what the proper pronunciation is, did that when I was a kid if I did not keep them protected from humidity. So uh, I suppose it's possible that the Mitsubishi Heavy Industries H3 rockets, SRBs, uh, were not adequately protected from humidity. But um, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's probably more likely that there was, an, there was an issue with the maybe the software that triggers the ignition or the mechanism that triggers the ignition, but uh, rather than the, the actual, because the... Uh, even though Estes model rockets do use solid propellant, it's not the same sort of nasty stuff that, uh, and it's certainly not the same caliber of, of fuel that's used by, you know, industrial grade uh, solid rocket propellant. Um, so uh, yeah, that would produce a lot. If, if Estes used that stuff, there would be a lot more a lot more lost fingers and lost hands out there, but um, all right. So that, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, MD5632 says a tourist crew dragon with two Saudi customers is coming up too, I think. Uh, so yeah, and whatever happened to Polaris Dawn? I that that was that hasn't launched yet, unless my memory is really failing me. And um, um, I guess it was uh, I guess it was delayed. I'm not sure what the what the delay was. But uh, in any case, yeah, there there very well could be more tourists 
uh, hopping aboard Crew Dragon, but I don't think so in the next week. So uh, until then, uh, keep it raw, and I will see you for uh, the Soyuz launch on Thursday, or maybe Crew 6 on uh, Saturday, Sunday. Until then, bye-bye.